Hi everyone. This will be a short demonstration of how Zoom works. You've already hopefully know how to get onto the site. Maybe you just clicked on a link and you agreed to launch the Zoom and then you would be able to uh, join us. But now that you're here, let me tell you a little bit about the tools that you're seeing. So to begin with, right now, this is called Gallery View. And with Gallery View, you can see everyone that's participating in the Zoom. You can change that by coming up to View and selecting Speaker. And when you select Speaker, then you'll only see the person that's talking. Now, since my camera is working in two different places, you're not seeing it, but normally this picture would be in that area. I'm gonna go back to Gallery. Okay, other things that can be done is that you, as a user, can change your name. So you can click on the three dots next to your name, and you can rename yourself. So in this case, I'm Mary Burns. I can still be Mary Burns, and I will say change. Now, on one of my other computers, I have it saying work. So on this computer, I'm going to go back to the gallery view because it has to be in the gallery view. And then I'm gonna to go to my work account. You can't see what's going on there. And I'm gonna click on my dots and then I can rename that. So I'm gonna name that new PC. And so you can see that you can change the names as well as me changing the name. So again, to change your name, three dots and rename. Okay, some other things you can do. Now, sometimes in some classes, we're going to say, okay, we're gonna have the Zoom going, but I want you to work on, on a website as well. So you need to have two windows at once. In order to do that, you have to exit full screen. Now, I'm not in full screen now, but if I was, when I went to, to view, it would say exit full screen. But since I'm not in full screen now, if I go to view, it says full screen. And if I click on that, it will go into full screen. So what I'm saying is if your instructor is saying, can you make your Zoom screen smaller so you can share your monitor with a website? Well, then you would make sure you are not in full screen. So when you go to view, it should say full screen. That means that you are not in full screen. I know it's confusing, but that's how it works. Okay, let's come down here, and these are both very important buttons here. This is mute and stop video. So if you don't want people to see your picture, for example, if we start recording, then you would click on stop video, and I look at me up there, and that disappears. Oh, there's two of me. So now I'm going to click that again, and then I'm able to be seen. All right, there's also mute. So you may be asked every so often to mute yourselves or you may be muted by the, by the uh, instructor or the person running the Zoom. This is where you control whether or not you can speak. If you tap on it once, and I'm gonna do it, you won't hear me. And then when I tapped it again, it went away. Now these are also useful for figuring out why something's not working. So you can see there's a little arrow next to mute. If I click on that arrow, I can see lots of different options, including uh, two different types of microphones that are attached to this particular device, some different speakers that are attached to this device, and then some tools where I can test my speaker and microphone. So if you get a new device and you're not sure if everything's working, you can tap on test speaker and microphone. Now let's say you're just not being heard, okay? So in that case, you wanna to switch to phone audio. So I'm gonna click on that, and then you'll see the phone number that you can call, and then you'll be able to hear and speak into the phone, and you won't have to worry about not being connected to the site. All right, and then, um, and then audio settings. So if you tap on audio settings, it actually opens up in this general window where you have audio settings as well as other settings. So here you can go and test the different speakers. So if you test the speaker and you don't hear it, you can change it and the microphone. And it's probably a good idea to uh, click on Zoom background no noise removal so it's not so prevalent. 
And that's basically all you really need to do there. Now I'm going to exit here, but we're going to come back to the same screen. I'm going to show you how. So I already told you about the video. If, it's, if there's a line through it, we don't see your picture. If there isn't a line through it, we do. And then I'm going to click on the upper arrow, and I'm going to again see that I can have different backgrounds. Now, here's where a lot of people get interested. If you notice, my background is blurred, and it's because sometimes I have things that, that are sort of messy in the background. I don't want people to see that. So I blur my background. But there's other things you can do in the background. You can choose a virtual background. So that's going to take me back to that same screen we had before, and now I'm in the virtual background screen. And I can take one of the ones that are on my device. Now, some of these come with the Microsoft program, with the Zoom program, and some of them I have added. For example, this is a picture from my collection that I've added. This is a picture that I created and put on that I added. You know, lots of things that I've added. But there's also things online that you can find that are really nice as well. All you need for a background is a picture on your device. Let me show you how that works. So you could either choose one of the ones you have, or you can click on the plus and you can add an image. You can also have a little video going in the background. But when you go to add the image, let me see if I can find a photo. And uh, let's see, oh, this is a nice photo. So I'm going to put that in my background. <laughs> you can see it can be a lot of fun to have different backgrounds like that. All right, and some of the ones I've chosen in the past. So the backgrounds are a lot of fun. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to, while we're here in the screen, oh, and by the way, you can see that there. Yep. Now you won't have security on yours, but you will have participants. So I'm gonna click on participants and I need to move my screen so you can see, there we go. Uh, with the names, except your computer will be at the very top. Next, uh, chat. So a lot of times during class, we might start chatting with you, and we might say, I'm going to put a link in the chat. Well, this is the chat, and you, you click on chat once, and that opens the chat window. So now I have the chat window below the participants, and if I click on chat again, it closes it. And by the way, if I want to close the participants window, it's the same thing. I can come over here and click on participants and that will close the window. But let's open up the chat window because I want to show you uh, how this works. So while you're in the chat window, you tap down here at the bottom and you can do your, tap, your chat. When you're done, you hit the send button over here so now it's been sent, you could see it up here. If somebody wants to uh, reply to that chat, hi everyone, nice to meet you. And now you can see that there's two comments. Now let's say I want to, I want to reply to one of these. So you can see when I hover over it, there's a little reply button. So I can reply to myself here, or I can reply to Mr. New P or Ms. New PC over here. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go, yes, nice to meet you. So now you'll notice that everything is sort of uh, one right on top of the other. If that's annoying and you don't need to see that string of replies, you can just click collapse all, and then you can just see one reply. There's also the little smiley face. You can give a very quick response and the three dots. You can copy, or you can quote, or you can even delete your post. One more thing down here at the bottom. Sometimes people will ask me, um, can I save my, my um, chats? And the answer is yes. So down here at the bottom, you can find three dots, and you click on the three dots, and you can see at the top, save chat. And that chat will be saved in a folder called Zoom on your device. So if you don't know where it's going to be saved, okay, show in folder, then it will open up in my folder. And let me, so Zoom has created its own folder in my documents and it's organized by date. 
So then if you wanted to find it again, you would open up your computer, your files, your Windows Explorer your, or your Finder with Mac. You would look for that documents folder that, and then you would look for the Zoom. And these are all the uh, uh, Zoom has saved for me. Okay, next, share your screen. This is important. So you will be on your device and you'll say, oh, I'm not seeing what you're seeing. And I'm thinking, gosh, it would be great if I could see their screen. Here's how you do it. You've got share screen at the bottom. So you tap on share screen and then you see um, all these different windows. These are all the things that are open on your device at this time. Most of the time, to make things simple, let's just choose the first screen. And that's going to be your entire desktop and then we'll work from there. If you wanted to show like, you know, a file you have open, like for example, I made a, um, a slide on PowerPoint, I could demonstrate that. Or I can show my Snagit capture, but for most of us, just give us the screen and then share. Okay, and now you're sharing the screen with someone. And then you can maybe open up a website. When you're done sharing, you want to just click Stop Share. And then it will stop sharing. So once again, everyone has this ability. Click on Share Screen, but don't do it while we're teaching. You know, let us wait till we're ready for you. But Share Screen, choose the first one, click Share and then you're sharing a screen. Okay, and then when you're done, you would stop sharing. You don't have record, but you do have reactions. So if you tap on it, this is the different reactions you can have. Now, this is not raising your hand. If I ask you to raise your hand, it isn't reactions, it's actually raise hand. Those are two separate things. But this is clapping. So you like what was done, maybe a presenter talks, you can clap, thumbs up, laughing so the, air, so the tears are coming, amazed, a heart, a party type thing, click on the three dots, and I've got even more emojis. We've got a ton of emojis here, and you can use any one of them, okay, if you want. So, and then also while we're here, we've got the skin tone. So uh, uh, they respect that we all have different colors of our skin. So you could tap on the skin tone and you can uh, select the picture that is most like your particular skin, if you, if you would like, you don't have to do that. So those were all found in reactions and, and that was in the reactions, all you do is, is click on it. Okay, this, this uh, up arrow is something only the host sees. Okay, uh, this is raising your hand. So when you click raising your hand, you can see that it shows up there. If you want to lower your hand, you just click on the three dots and lower your hand. You don't have to worry about apps. Uh, we don't really use them very much. So whiteboards is something your instructors might use if you need to if they say access the whiteboard then just click on that and you can see the whiteboards there all right then there's more so if you click on more you can see captions so we our, our sessions are automatically um, closed captioned so if you want to see the captions you click on captions you can show your captions it's going to be in english so now you can see that the the captions are showing up if you get these screens at the top, you can X out of them as long as you know that they're there. And remember that if there's captions, everyone can, can read what you're saying as well as hear what you're saying. If you want to turn off the captions, you go back to more, you go back to captions, and then you can hide captions. Your computers, you just have show captions. So, all right, now we might occasionally set up breakout rooms. So this is how we set it up. So I'm going to turn it on. On your end, as students, it would either automatically move you into a room or you would look down to where you can find a, a note at the bottom of the screen and it will say breakout rooms. So breakout rooms are something that you would probably uh, see in most of your classes. And they are an excellent way for us to connect with you and have you connect with each other in a small setting.
after the breakout room closes automatically, you'll be brought back to the uh, main room. However, for many people, it will then be muted. So just note when you come back, you might be muted and you have to unmute yourself. That pretty much uh, shows you everything you need just to get by with Zoom. When you're ready to leave, you would click leave button as I'm leaving and you would have to again say yes, leave meeting. So that is our Zoom. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments, but this is a good way to just get started with Zoom. Good luck with your fall classes.